Hello everybody and welcome back to Random Rosters. It is week number 20 here in the NFL season, the 2001-2002 NFL season. No, 2002-2003 NFL season and inside of NFL 2K3. We are down to the final four teams, the Colts, the Browns on the AFC side, the Rams and the Bears on the NFC side. Who will win? Let's find out today. We'll also take a look at the Pro Bowl at the end of the video. Um, so that'll be fun as well. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to scroll down, subscribe, ring the bell if you'd like to see more content from me. Uh, regarding random rosters, I think we're going to take a break from it for the summer. We're going to gamble a little bit on Madden, which is always a terrible idea because it's not going to change enough and we're not going to be able to watch games. Um, but maybe we'll just kind of bring it back in sync with the football season and uh, we'll focus on some other games for the time being. So, if you've enjoyed the show, let me know down there, and, and we might see it in a couple of months, but we'll take a little bit of a break from it, see if we can get things back rolling. I know the season was a little uneven at times, it's partially my fault, um, but, uh, you know, sometimes when you look at, like, a video that you put up, they got literally <laughs> zero views, it's like, well, maybe, maybe focusing on something else would be a good thing to do, but... We won't focus on that right now. We're going to focus on the four teams remaining, and we're going to figure out if my voice has enough gas to make it through the remainder of the games. Colts and Browns is up first, and let's get that started. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to put the teams. I'm just going to put AFC title game, NFC title game, and the Super Bowl logo, so I don't even have to worry about this. The 25th overall rank Indianapolis Colts have a shot at the playoffs. They are taking, or the, the, at the Super Bowl, excuse me, they are taking on the number one overall Cleveland Browns, even though they have a 20th passing offense. Let's see how this goes. I'm very excited about it. I'll give myself at least the option if I want to use these. I love that it's just Cleveland Brown Stadium. This would have been like the first year they were back, huh? Jerome Woods and Terrell Owens? I can already feel like my voice is not going to make it through. I don't, I don't have the stamina I thought I had. Turns out when you stream <laughs> like five hours before this. Because he pulls down everything thrown at him. The numbers prove it. In the postseason, he's averaged 65 yards and just under a touchdown a game. We'll see how it works out, Peter. Let's go to the coin toss. Fail. Fail to fall. Fail to fail. The Colts elect to receive, and we're ready. I think I need to, to bump that volume up just a smidge. So here we go. Game number one of four today. The AFC title game. Sorry for punching the table there. Cleveland is going to kick it away. And here we go. I think I just said that. Great. Excellent. We're off to a good start. I recorded the intro to this video like twice. Uh-oh. I am making sure to get this video done early. I think part of the problem last week was that the game might have, the video might have gone up late um, because knock on wood, the stream did end up crashing or OBS ended up crashing. So at least if we have that problem this time around, I have enough time to fix the problem. But that is a conversation for another day. Smith gets the gets a run off the right side. He'll pick up three. And that is our first play from scrimmage. I think the Cleveland Browns would be the favorite in this game. They've looked good all season long. Coming out of a tough AFC North. I guess I could have given you the, the recap on how these teams got here. But, yeah, we could do that for the Super Bowl contenders, or the Super Bowl participants. Here's a look at the Indianapolis Colts offensive line. I tried to run off the left side. Not much of a gain there. Oh, I'm still in just chatting. Whoops. The receiving core. Terrell Owens leads this squad, putting on a big show for the fans. In the postseason, he's averaged 65 yards and just under a touchdown a game. 
Finally, here's the general and his next in command. Retro. Greasy sets the tempo in this group. Throwing the ball in the postseason, he's averaged 174 yards and over a touchdown a game. Brian Greasy, okay, the quarterback. Back to the action. It's third and about seven. Third down and seven, empty backfield and five wide. Short throw and defended very nicely. They'll give him a gain of two, but Cleveland was all over that. I kind of like the play call. I like the play design, a quick pass, quick, easy, accurate pass. Get it into your receiver's hands, let him make a move, and get upfield. It's a good plan, just didn't, uh, didn't work out. Finally Here's a look at that Cleveland Browns defense. Ty Law flies around the field and gets in receivers' faces. Let's get back to the game. Maynard comes in to punt after a three and out. It's away. All right, kick is away. It's going to be returned from the 40. And a pretty standard return there up to the 47. Almost a 48-yard line. Not a whole lot of excitement there. First down and 10. It's great starting field position for Cleveland with uh, Tim Couch. We've kind of had like some weird quarterbacks. I think the big name left might be Brett Favre if he plays. For, no, it's not because he doesn't play for any of those teams. So we're down to Tim Couch. Brian Greasy, there's a nice run off the right side, and he is booking into the secondary, inside the 30, inside the 20, down to the 10, one man to beat, and he gets knocked out of bounds at the three. Just a terrific start for Cleveland, a three and out on defense, great field position to start this drive, and Eddie George with the ball up the field, easy peasy. Gain possible. The Browns have a first after the big run on that last play. George is behind the quarterback. Jumbo formation. This is what you want to see out of the Cleveland Browns. They don't have a great passing offense, so you want to see them hit that run game. That's their bread and butter, and that gets them six points. Eddie George didn't want to be caught short, so look at this. Eddie George with a nice little dive there into the end zone. Didn't really need it. He was probably going to get there with his strength. But you'd like to see the dive. Avoid some contact. Save yourself as much as possible for the Super Bowl, while also simultaneously doing what might be impossible, leaving it all on the line. Save yourself, but also do everything you possibly can. Kick is up, kick is good. And we have a 7 0 Cleveland lead. The Browns put the first points on the board 7 0. Carney lines up for the kickoff. Got a lot behind this one. Cartwright we were fields this one and he fielded it inside the end zone and, and that'll bring it out to the 20 yard line so Indianapolis with a very quick three and out two play right two play drive for Cleveland's offense and then right back into Indianapolis's hands we'll see what they can do from the 20 yard line first and 10. Greasy drops back and throws. He, oh, we had a man but couldn't hold on. That's my nightmare, too. Having a man can't hold on. That was a, that was a nice pass right where it needed to be. Second and ten. Second 
Greasy stays back. Barely gets it off. Did you see that Brian Greasy fake like he was going to throw it behind him? It's a nice find there. I believe that's Hines Ward out there on the outside. It's a nice job. A little stutter step inside. Wide open receiver and a good ball. Picks up about 15 yards or so and it's first down and 10. Ball on the 36. And I'll actually give that a gain of 16 yards. As they were on the 20, it was almost a gain of 17. Boy, do I know how many yards that they got. All right. There's a run right up the middle. Hit and drilled backwards. Second down and 10 with no gain on the play. Stopping up the middle and throwing for a loss. All at the 36 yard line. They line up with their tight end left. Greasy. Short pass for Greasy intercepted. It looked like it was a really good throw, and then the defender turned around and got kind of one of the kind of a weird little boost there. He got right in front of the receiver. If Greasy puts a little more air under this ball and lets his receiver run under it, I think the problem is the ball is a little bit short. In addition to some weird, uh, some weird animation physics there. Ward's probably off and running, but as it stands, it's an interception, and Cleveland can start putting some nails in the Indianapolis Colts coffin early in this one. See if they stick with the ground game here. They have another. They go with the eye formation. They have more incredible field position to start their drive here. Couch drops and fires. It doesn't matter. Running or throwing, Cleveland is on their game today. Eric Moulds coming up with a reception. This is why I like random rosters. This was why I kind of figured, like, was curious about. This is why I started. I was like, is there a team like Houston, like Cleveland? Some teams that have been down on their down on their luck. Can they make a run? Ball at the 16 yard line. First down and ten. Two receivers the bottom side of your screen. They're gonna go with a run to George. George with incredible strength to make what looked like about eight yards. Uh, go for about 12. Eddie George was on fire on that run. <laughs> Talk about keeping it floored, man. A little muscle car running, that's for sure, Peter. Very impressive acceleration. Oh, yeah, forget about the 40-yard dash time. I want to see his quarter mile time. It's first and goal. George with a run off the right side. Indianapolis would be smart to just sell out to stop the run. If you lose to Tim Couch in the throwing game, I think you can live with that. I don't know that you want to just let Eddie George run all over the place. I might not have it. 7-0, Cleveland through one. They are knocking on the door yet again, 83 yards already. And they have small or less time of possession in this game. That is how efficient they have been. It's second and goal. Second down and goal from the six. Play action pass. Throws over the middle. It's almost intercepted off the fingertips of the middle linebacker. Look like they were going for George in the passing game. Almost through a terrible pick. Third and goal. One man back. They highlight the man who couldn't come up with that pick. 
George in for six. Second rushing touchdown of the game for Eddie George. That's why I didn't think he needed that dive. Look at that strength. Stays on his feet across the goal line. 51 was there. Ready to make that play. We have an early blowout here in Cleveland. Five plays, 38 yards, a minute and 44 seconds off the clock. Is back and we again are watching the Cleveland Browns kick off. This is returnable. Atto catches it in the end zone. And he's going to be dropped short of the 20. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 17 yard line. Well, last time they had it, they turned it over on the interception. Let's see if they worked out the kinks here. Ball on the 17. Oh, you like that back up against the wall? They line up with a split backfield. Smith with the ball. Smith with the run, bounces it up the middle. Got contacted and driven backwards. A solid five yard gain. This is what you want to see out of Indianapolis. Just pick up that first first down. That's all you gotta do. I mean it's not all you have to do, but if you can get into a bit of a rhythm here. A, no, a nice run or two, maybe a quick it's pass for a fine. first down. Give your defense a break. They're getting destroyed by this Cleveland offense. Smith bounces it to the right side. Clipped from behind. Flies forward for a first down. And there's a good start for the Indianapolis Colts. Look at this. Wow, he puts his whole body into that move and narrowly escapes. Well, I, you know, I thought he was down for sure, Peter, but that extra effort helps him bust loose. Oh, you're so right, Dan. Everybody takes their lumps in this game. It's what, it's what you do afterwards that separates the men from the boys. What? It was a tackle animation? Ball at the 28-yard line. They'd like what? <laughs> He didn't make any extra move. He just got hit forward. Greasy drops back, Greasy drops back throws, and finds a receiver over the middle. It's a nice catch out to the 44-yard line. McGee coming up with a big grab. First down. Brian Greasy locked in on his man despite the fact he was covered. And there's the completion. And he made that look easy. Had no trouble beating the tight covering. He could toss anything, even a salad, and hit his man. Another first down for the Indianapolis Colts here. They line up with four wideouts. Contacted in the backfield, but a good job to stay on his feet. Turns what would be a three or four yard loss into a one yard gain. Second down and nine. Oh my goodness. It's second and nine. Greasy dropping back, fires a quick throw out to the far sideline. Looked like there was a little bit of like a jam there right at the start of that route. Uh, and that caused the timing to be off just a little bit because it looked like it was a short slant, a short slant. It's third and nine. But unable to make the connection. Third down and nine. Can Indianapolis come up with a third down conversion here? Five wide receivers. Greasy stops back, throws over the middle, and he looked it looked better than it was. He hit a Cleveland Brown defender right in the helmet at exactly the halfway point of quarter number two. Fourth down and nine coming up.
Maynard will punt this one away. Maynard boots it. All the way back inside the 20. A nice punt in the worst starting field position for Cleveland by quite a large margin really in this one this so far. So First far, and 10. They produced where it counts most, the scoreboard, and they can add more on this drive. Ball at the 16-yard line. You may have the ball now, but I'm getting it right back. Strong on, tight right, tight right. Ball in the 16-yard line. Over the run to Eddie George. He picks up one before he falls forward. But there wasn't much room past the line of scrimmage on that one. Nine yards to go. Ball on the 17. We've reached the two-minute warning. That's two minutes to go here in the first half. It's been all Cleveland. Indianapolis has shown a sign or two of life, but they haven't been able to score any points. Obviously, the interception was a was the big one. Second down and nine. They're going with another run. Eddie George, even though Indianapolis put a bunch of extra people in the box, George still springs free on that far sideline. Excellent gain there and gets out of bounds to save the Browns a timeout inside of two minutes. This is just a terrific run. You saw a bunch of extra people coming off the right side or the near sideline of the formation, and George bounces it the opposite way. Well, the numbers show he's having a great day today. Oof, already nearly 100 yards. Two big runs in today's game already. They get out to the 40-yard line after the 25-yard gain. Ooh, deep drop for Tim Couch. Rips it, and a great job. Great job to get a hand on that. If he misses that pass, and we have seen... <clears throat> We've seen that a lot in this game, where the defender goes for that that tip, that interception, and the receiver's wide open with nobody to defend, nobody to get him on the backside. It's an easy touchdown, and that's what we had here. Easy touchdown, but the tip just knocks it away. Fires out to number 85. He gets up field again, sets out of bounds. This is eliminating where this game gets super weird with the clock management stuff. If you keep running out of bounds or throwing incomplete passes, you don't have to waste time or forget to use your timeouts because the clock stops automatically. So good job, Cleveland. That's why you're the number one team in the in the game. Or in this mode, I should say. First down and 10, going with a little pitch to Eddie George, but not super well blocked on that near sideline. He just doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with. Ball on the 44. Taking a long, good restart, Long. They're going with two tight ends. George will George. Side. It will be third down. Trying to make himself thin there. You can see the little little sidestep move trying to get up the field, but nothing working there. Third down and four. Third and four. Three wide receivers on the field. I forgot to turn off the Xbox. Third down and four. Couch rolls and fires, finds a receiver. Does he have pull away speed? He does not, but he does have it inside the 10. Down to about the seven yard line for a first and goal from the for the Browns, I should say. I believe that was a third down conversion. It's a short rollout. Looked like the pressure was gonna get into the backfield and disrupt that play, but a nice move on the outside and a great adjustment to pick up that low throw. And Cleveland, even though they started inside their own 20 yard line, Marches down the field. The Browns have a first after the big pass on that last play. Bradford's wide right. And we'll see if he can repeat his performance from the last play. Couch over the middle. 
Snagged inside the one timeout. The Browns take a timeout. That's their final one. Final timeout used with 59 seconds to go. I like the throw. I mean, you get it over the middle. It's maybe a little, a little cluttered, but hopefully get the touchdown. If not, you're right there. And that's where they are. Tim Couch drops back, throws over the middle, blocked. I got a hand up and knocked it away. Third down and goal. Walls can't come up with it. Are you listening? We write a thousand pages. They're torn it on the floor. Something, something, something. Words. Two tips for Patrick Sertan. Third and goal, Cleveland. Going with a big shift. Still a jumbo set with a couple of wide receivers, one to either side of the formation. Couch drops back. This is not the strength of their team, and you can see why right there. Bad throw. I don't understand that play call at all. It's hard for receivers to you, this is this is the Marshawn Lynch conundrum all over again. I guess this would have been before that, but there's no reason you should be kicking a field goal here with how well Eddie George has played. Three straight passes in goal-to-go situations, though I did like the first one. And the Cleveland Browns are going to have to settle for a field goal. Does that do enough to give the Colts a touch of life? John Carney chips this one in pretty easily. Right through. And this isn't one of those scenarios where sometimes you look at it and you go, why are you taking three? Go for it on fourth down. I think it's just bad play calling on second down and third down. The score, 17 to 0. 11 plays, 83 yards. Minute 31. Carney sets up and will kick it away. Good kick. From inside the goal line. One of the better run backs. That could have been a game changing run back, but he gets tackled around the 35. Still could be a game changing run back and could be a game changing defensive stand there. If Indianapolis can come away with three here, maybe a good defensive stop on the first possession for Cleveland. This game could get interesting in the second half. However, if they come up with nothing and they give up more points, we might be in for a snooze fest after the half. Oh, my God. Oh, that's his second pick of the day. Who was that ball to? Peter Bolware figures out the passing attack and shoots it down with a doozy of an interception. Let's watch. That's just a total miscommunication. There's no Colt in the vicinity. Bunch of yards afterwards, and that is some beautiful upfield running. Beautiful boy, I tell you what, Dan, if they can get another score before the half, they could take a commanding lead. Big drive Burn. right here. Ball on the 24. Couch hangs back, sits tight. First and goal from the five. No timeouts for Cleveland, so they gotta. Hopefully they don't spike the ball here. We'll go with a shift. Couch drops back. Funky animation. Taken down at the 15-yard line. This is where you should spike the ball. They do have to wait for everybody to get on, on side. Oh, they're going with the same play again. They're going with a run play. Eddie George, oh my goodness, touchdown Cleveland. You are kidding me. That play should have ended the half. Instead, Cleveland comes away with a touchdown. It's 23 to zero. The kick is up, the kick is good. Oh my goodness. The Browns now have a comfortable lead in this one. The score, 24 to 0. Barney lines up, signals, and we're ready for the kickoff. 
It's away. Cartwright gets it deep. Macklin comes in and makes the tackle on the return. That will do it for the first, first half. Down. Score 24 to 0. Let's go to Clark Dishman in the ESPN studios for a halftime update. Welcome to this playoff edition of the ESPN Halftime Update. Here's a breakdown of the numbers from the first half. The Browns came out of the gates ready to play, as shown by their My rushing goodness. yards. They He's really did. 208 to total yards already. More of the same and put this one away. Fairly balanced, Eddie big George plays. Eddie George, shockingly, is the player uh, the hot at the half. Touchdowns. I guess it's not really surprising. Three, three touchdowns on 10 carries. 30% of his touches have been touchdowns, which is absurd. It should be 40%. Or I guess slightly lower than 40%. He should have had a touchdown on the drive. They settle for three. This game's over. This game is over. 24 to nothing. Wilkins sets off and will kick it away to start the third quarter. Nice kickoff. Smith catches it. Makes the tackle on the return. That's what I was looking at. Boy, they, they have the ball again and are well in control. Of this hey, game. It's not over yet, but it's quickly. Thanks, everybody. That way. 21 hundred subs over on Twitch or on uh, YouTube, excuse me. Eddie George. Uh, two people had contacts. Two people had hands on Eddie George in the backfield, and he still turns it into a two yard game. Absolute. In the most positive way, monster. Second and eight. I think Cleveland is probably realistically the favorite. Um, I don't think either of the other teams are super highly ranked. It's the, ba oh, the Bears. I think if it's Bears Browns, I think it'll be a pretty good Super Bowl. But I don't know that the Rams are going to put up much of a fight against Cleveland. It feels like it. It should probably be Cleveland Chicago, Indianapolis and St. Louis have had some nice runs, but they don't have nearly the same consistency with their team. Teams. Third down and seven. We go with a run to Eddie George. George on third and seven breaks loose. He's into the secondary. Might not have breakaway speed, but he's into the Indianapolis territory inside the 30. Down to the 20. Inside the 15. Down near the 10. And they will knock him down finally at the two and a half yard line. That was a third down and seven, folks. Every foot of turf he got on this play, including a painful stiff arm move. You gotta like this move right here. What a soldier he is, Dan. Yes, he is, Peter. He did what he had to to get the extra yardage. Oh, Dan, they're getting great production. 13 out of their carries. He's averaging 14 and a half yards. He's nearing two. 100 yards on the ground and we have just started the second half in a game with five minute quarters eddie george again but this time stuffed he'll lose about one it'll be second down and goal first down to stuff him for a loss that's how to play the run ball on the three Eddie George with another run, this time stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, they're going to need more than a half-hearted arm tackle to put him down. 97 yards after the hit. Cleveland's got to keep their foot on the gas here, doing a good job, at least keeping this clock moving. I think he'll take that, even though it's it's Indianapolis again, just kind of selling out to stop the run. Patrick Sertain made sure they weren't going anywhere on third down, Dan. 
A perfectly executed tackle. And it leaves them a few yards shy of the line of scrimmage, not to mention the first down mark. It's a nice play by Patrick Sertan on the back end. Fourth and goal, they'll settle for three. It'll be a 24-yard attempt. And even with the monster run by Eddie George, they do still milk three minutes off this clock. And that's what you're looking for in these situations. It's up. Good. An easy field goal from that way. So Cleveland has either scored touchdowns or they've scored field goals from like inside the 20. Browns filled the lead to blow out proportions. The score, 27 This is one of the zero. worst games that we've had. Seven play, 72-yard drive. For some reason, they said it only took 259. Take this one away. Which is odd. This is a beauty. Out of the back of the end zone, and the everything is going right for Cleveland today. Well, Dan, there is time left in the game, but they are fading fast and can't waste time. This is an important drive. Ball at the 20-yard line. I know they're saying that they don't have a lot of time left. I would argue that their last drive, which I know they don't have a lot of time left, but this isn't the important drive. The important drive was the one that they had where they threw a pick right before the half. That, that can't happen if you want to keep... Keep up in this game. Second down and eight. Second and eight. Split backfield. Second and eight for Greasy as he throws over the middle. It's caught and he's dragged down at the 34-yard line. Gives Indianapolis a fresh set of downs. I mean, at least at this point, nice if you can put some points on the board and maybe make this look, look like less of a blowout. He had them lined up at the right, and they connected for a decent game. This is an Indianapolis team that at times has felt like it's overperforming, especially because they don't... Like, Cleveland you can look at and go, hey, you don't have a great quarterback. and The greatest quarterback of the group left with Tim Couch, but you can also look at it and go, oh... Just turn around and hand off to Eddie George, which is what I've been telling them to do all season long. There have been stretches where Cleveland likes to go to the passing game. That was almost just almost picked off again. Tony McGee should have come back for that one. I think he could have made a play on it. Ball at the 34-yard line. Mm -hmm. Caught and just past that first down marker. First down and ten. First down. First down. Ten yards. Ryan Greasy throws a homing missile on this play. Check this out. Totally threads the needle. There are two defenders there, Peter, and there was definitely not a lot of room for oh, error. Oh, absolutely. There was not a lot of room for, for anything. Ball on the 44. They go with the I formation. First down and 10. Will they get up one more playoff before the end of the quarter? They will. It'll be almost intercepted again. I think that's Bull O'Hare getting his way. Yeah, we're getting in the passing lane there. 27-0. After three, all Cleveland in this one. 185 yards on the ground. 95 more through the air. And they are just crushing this team. Second and ten. Greasy with a very weird looking play in the backfield, but a good job by his receiver to come up with the catch and make a nice move to get inside the 20. Nice catch and run there by number 83. An incredible play. I think we've got the highlight on replay here. 
Yep, that's it. What a terrific that move. Williams. Not only did it look fantastic, it also got him free to pick up a few more yards. Incredible. The Colts, after the big pass last play, will have a first down. Wilkins lines up wide right after racking up the yards last play. Smith, Smith first and ten. They're going to hand that ball off. Right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe slightly behind. Either way, it'll be second down and ten. Ball at the 17-yard line. Two wide receivers on the field. Reese drops back, throws, and it's intercepted again. That was the most athletic interception we've seen of the three today. Bullwares had a couple nice ones. I'm not arguing that, but that was a really nice grab. Full extension. Look at that highlight. Stretches out for this one. Watch this highlight snag. Well, their offense takes the field after that great interception. Let's see if they can capitalize. Ball on the 18. That's my ball. You give me back my ball. See what Cleveland wants to do here. Even with only a few plays used on their last drive, they were still able to use a good chunk of clock. Not that they were necessarily trying to. I think in this scenario, you are. George with the carry again in the backfield. Tackled after a short game. Third down and seven. I'd anticipate that this team would try to run the ball again. They actually can take this down to the two-minute warning. There is just enough time to do that, but they do have to snap the ball with like two or one second remaining. There would be a couple of seconds for the actual play itself, and then there would be another seven seconds before that 40-second clock started. So even though it doesn't really look like it, That seven seconds is uh, is all the difference. It's third and about seven. Let's play smart, baby. Let's play smart. Eight, nine, nine. Bold goes in motion. Wow, a delay of game? Hello, are you idiots? Only Cleveland would get a delay of game while trying to run out the clock. The Browns take a little too long and get the delay of game call. As soon as they started with that like motion, it's like oh. It's now third and twelve. You worried about this play? You got a long way to go, baby. The Browns still stay with the ground game. There's a nice little run there. Defense dug their trenches. And there it is. A great job. The seven second difference. Plus about three or four for the play, and Cleveland could take this bad boy down to the two minute warning. Waltz on into the Super Bowl on a 27-0 victory. If you're Chicago, you're watching this game, you're getting ready for St. Louis, kind of maybe keeping an eye on this. Bruin. We'll punt it away after a three and out. Okay, we good job. The they, did, they did take it till the two-minute warning. Sometimes they like to snap the ball with like one second remaining. Um, stop Eddie George, and I think you have a shot to win. If you let it, let Eddie George run all over you, good night. Nice punt. 
punt is away. It's going to be a really nice field position for Indianapolis with 152 remaining inside Cleveland territory. This is great coverage on this one. Look how fast they dropped the return man. He doesn't stand a chance. Ow. Goes down immediately. Perfectly played by this punt squad. And the special teams coach is congratulating his men on the sidelines. Another turn at offense for this group, and unfortunately, this game is pretty much over. They should just try and get some yards for respect at this point. Ball at the 49-yard line. They line up in the shotgun. Ball on the 49. Quick pass and had it in the hands, but dropped second and 10. He didn't get his energy bar this morning or something. He should have had that one. Seen a couple of weird drops for Indianapolis. I think it was like the first play of the game. Indianapolis dropped a pass that they should have had, and it was all downhill from there. Greasy drops back and fires. It's not pass interference. It's just four players all jumbled in one area. Brutal. Different plays. They gotta sync up better. Third and ten. Hey, baby, just to keep his pass up. Come on, come on, Reese needs back. Throws. Reese drops, throws into double coverage, and it's fourth and ten. And he right with some great coverage on that one, Dan. Played him just tight enough to make it a difficult catch. They're going for the first out on fourth and ten. Greasy, watch that. Throws. Greasy throws. The throw is a little bit low, and that is the difference between potentially keeping that drive alive and it being stopped four yards short of the line to gain. It's a really nice tackle. It's a good job to react and get there to the ball, but that ball's got to be in the numbers so you can turn and get upfield. to try something, but perhaps I would have punted there and end the game with some respect. A minute and 40 seconds on the game clock. Let's go. Let's take it. They line up with two tight ends. Mathis in motion. Going with a pitch to the outside. Didn't really get blocked. Oh, for the love of goodness. The Colts take their first time out. Got the pitch. Carried it out to the right of the line. But he's Oh, this game should be over. Before he stopped. Ball on the 43. And their tight end to the left. Walls goes in motion. George with the ball. Peter takes the tackle. That's number four. The Colts will take a timeout. That's their second. Oh, this is so frustrating. It's third and nine. So frustrating. They're out of this game. There's no reason they should be taking timeouts. One man in the backfield. George gets it again. Uh, looking for Eddie George to maybe spring one more run. If I'm Cleveland, I know they're not going to go for it because this game was made in 2001 uh, for a 2002 release, you know, that sort of thing. I'd go for it on fourth and three. Like, just put them... Just get the first down. Put this game to bed. Clock is at one minute twenty-five seconds. You can't kick Bruin will punt it away God. after a three and out. There's the punt. <laughs> Nicely downed inside the twenty yard line, now near the ten. Just kind of Held on to that tight rope with sideline. Nicely in first and ten. Over. They should just try and get some yards for respect at this point. Ball at the 12-yard line. Well, safety blitz off the outside. 
8 for 19, 3 picks, just over 100 yards. Ooh! Ho, 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 ho. They called three timeouts and got the ball back for him to throw yet another interception. His Cleveland Browns team Browns looks good. Passes like, like King Kong swatting down by planes. Let's watch. Oh, kaboom. Well, he's Is that his second pick of the day? Away, Peter. He's they go the, really both interceptions, like, yeah, yeah, they better get the flight both first half interceptions and both right, uh, second half interceptions. Kind of yeah, I think so. Sorry. All right, well, it's Cleveland can finally run out the clock here. Well in control of this game, Dan. They just need just outside of the red zone. They've been in control of this game the entire way. Greasy comes up absolutely flat in the playoff or in the AFC Championship. And the Cleveland Browns are the first team to punch a ticket to the postseason. There you go. There's the whistle and so there you have it. Any sort of special animation or anything? No? Okay. Cleveland wins 27 to nothing. They really only needed one half to put this team away. That is what they did. We'll see you next time for more NFL action on ESPN. Now, let's go to the post-game wrap-up. Thanks for joining us here on the ESPN post-game show. I'm Clark Dish. Four turnovers. 286 total yards. 95 through the air, I think. I don't think they threw a single pass in the second half. Well, they didn't complete a second uh, pass in the second half. Eddie George thundered for a total of 196 195 yards, yards ESPN, over 100 after the first hit, now, three touchdowns sure on the day, 22 the carries right for him. We'll Let's take a look at the box score. Uh, I want to look at defensive. Yeah, two for Fletcher, two for Bullware. Um, I feel like it's hard to pick against Cleveland. I don't know the last time anyone's really said that. Well, let's jump into game number two here. It's the Rams taking on the Bears. What do we have in store for the NFC side it's of things? Championship on ESPN. The Rams to 18th the ranked St. Louis Rams. A couple of high ranks. ranks. Rushing offense, rule. rushing we'll defense. Pretty porous passing. With a oh, the Chicago the Bears. Bears They're somehow ranked 10th. And they only have one top. They only have one top 10. Everything else is in the... Basically the back half of the league. It's the NFC Championship game. This game isn't quite as lopsided as I thought it would be. I think Cleveland is the clear favorite with the way they played. Both of these teams have some really bad weaknesses here on the NFC side of things. Um, Cleveland does have like a pretty low ranked passing attack, but if they do what they did against Indianapolis with just Eddie George running all over the field, some better play calling. And I think that game actually is a lot worse. Actually, some. Eh, he probably ended up right about where it should have. Because you take that field goal that probably should have been a touchdown, and you just kind of flip it. It's the same amount of points. Because they got real lucky that that didn't end the half. That run play. The Rams will receive, and we're about to get underway. Bam. 
Murray will kick it off to start the first half. It's that off. kick is away, and here we go for the NFC Championship the game. Who will win the right to play the Cleveland Browns for the first time ever in the Super Bowl? They got the ball. Let's see if they can take care of business. Have kind of a weird quarterback with Jim Miller. Ball on the 24. It's a pretty nice run back, though, to get it up past that uh, normal starting spot at the 20. Miller drops back. Almost intercepted, but a nice catch on the back side. Goes for about nine and a half. It's a good read there by McMahon. You can see maybe a little pressure coming off that uh, near sideline and then nearly threw a terrible pick. But a great job to uh, get it just over. Ricky Kroll, Bubba Franks, Travis Taylor. And lastly, the man who calls the play. Jim Miller. Edner and James. Edner and James. I mean, James is a good running back. I don't know that he's Eddie, I don't know that he's Eddie George. I don't know how good he would be in this game. Second and inches. Franks in motion. Going with a run to Edgar and James up the middle. Did need a whole lot, but he did get it. First down. First down and ten. Ten yards to go. Ball at the 35-yard line. They line up with four wideouts. Miller drops back. Just gives them five wideouts. A little bit of clutter up there where he wanted to throw the ball. A little bit of contact. No pass interference. It's a good no call. And it's second down. And the other linemen respect that. Up now are the linebackers. James Ferrier is the standout player of this bunch. And lastly, the secondary. Fred Smoot. Fred Smoot. Marcus Coleman on the back end. Pursuit, baby. Now back to the game. Second and ten. Second down here for Jim Miller and the St. Louis Rams offense. I think this, perform or, uh, this formation was good last time they played. And it is fruitful yet again for 15, almost 20 yards. It's really good, that bunch formation, which you're taking a look at. It just kind of takes the defense with them. They brought, it's a perfect call against the defense that Chicago called because they brought, Chicago brought a little bit of extra pressure on that side of the line. Him just running a short little out, make it nice and easy, little outlet for Jim Miller to find. Let your receiver make a move. First and 10 in Chicago territory. Five wide again. Miller drops, back. Miller drops back and fires. Intercepted. Overthrew his intended receiver and it is picked. Just an awful, awful play. I don't know if we'll get a look at it from the receiver's perspective, but you can see there on the right side of your screen, just above me, the uh, number 25 was in the way the whole time. Again, good no call. It's literally just two hitboxes colliding against each other. That threw off the entire timing of that route, and it leads to a pick. Let's see if they can punch this one into the end zone. Ball at the 37-yard line. They have their tight end to the right. Stewart fades back. Stewart almost threw an interception right back there. You can see, I was going to call it before uh, they snapped the ball, but you can see at the top of their formation, you can see that same bunch set that uh, St. Louis used. They were trying to confuse that defense. Instead, I think it threw Cordell Stewart off because they didn't get confused and all of a sudden almost threw an interception. Channel? 89 yards and around a touchdown a game. 
Finally, here's the general and his next Cordell in command. Stewart. Cordell Stewart. Chris. Is this trio, it's punch. Throwing the ball in the postseason. Come on. He's averaged 221 yards and just under two touchdowns a game. Back to the Fumatsu field Mata? I forget. I forget how it is. It's, it's tough. It's tough. Second and ten. Is Highlighting Rodney Harrison and his no stats so far in the game because he's been on the field for literally one play. There's a nice throw from Cordell Stewart and a great grab on the back end by number 82, Jimmy Smith. Goes up and extends. Comes down with the catch and a first down. With his receiver with ease, Dan. He sees his man and then airs it out for the completion. Yeah, they are in sync. They're able to depend on each other as the play unfolds. Well, they actually look like Backstreet Boys to me. I, I don't follow that. <laughs> Ball, midfield, right at the 50. First down and 10. There's that bunch formation again at the bottom of the screen. One receiver on the outside. I think that's the difference. There's a nice throw and a good find all the way up inside the 30 is Shannon Sharp. The difference between how they use the bunch formation is on the St. Louis side, they have a receiver uh, isolated on the other side of the formation. Chicago puts all their receivers on the same side of that formation. Yes. Oops, 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 oops. That You're one's right. on me. That one's on me. I apologize. Ball at the 30 yard line. Thought my computer was crashing. I just I bumped the cord with my foot. They have two tight ends. Here. First down and ten. Sharp goes in motion. Stewart drops back. Stewart drops back. Short pass over the middle. Sharp. Comes up with a nice reception. Again, it's first down and ten. It's the bullseye on this baby. Check out this beauty. How did he get it by all the defenders? Yeah, he made those guys look like the Three Stooges. Yeah, not even the classic Three Stooges. More like two shemps and a curly Joe. Oh, remember him. <laughs> Ball on the 18. Check out Tyler. First down and 10 inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Short pass. Jimmy Smith coming up with the reception. They'll pick up a good chunk of yards for a first down. First and goal. Jimmy Smith leaps up to make this catch with ease. Take a look here. Oh, oh look. boy. Looks like he's taking some ballet lessons in the offseason, eh, Dan? Well, you never know. <laughs> was that with ease or was that an incredible catch? Like, what is happening? Who knows? Who could know? The Bears are putting a good drive together. First down. Smith in motion. Oh, here's that uh, St. Louis defense we haven't even looked at yet. Gerald Gardner deserves our full attention, Dan. He and his squad need to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback today. Next up are the linebackers. Nikio Spikes knows whether it's a run or a pass before the rest do. Last but not least, we have the secondary. Rodney Harrison stays neck and neck with his man neutralizing him. Let's get back to the game. One minute to go here in the first quarter. Second down and 10. Bears with a long, methodical drive off the interception. It's second and goal. And second and goal from just outside the five-yard line. Tight jumbo formation. They're going to go with a run. He's going to bounce it to the outside. He'll pick up about half a yard. That will be third down and goal. This was what you were looking for uh, Cleveland to do the last time or in the last game where they were right at the doorstep instead. Chicago maybe could have used the play action pass there on second down. Instead, they go three straight runs where they don't get a whole lot going. 
This isn't necessarily a team that's been dominant on the ground. They're a little more balanced. You can see they're actually a lot less balanced than I thought it was. 56 yards passing, 4 yards rushing, and they're going to probably end up settling for just a field goal, though they have picked up 4 first downs on this drive that started after the interception. And there is the drive summary. Eight plays, 59 yards, 303 off the clock. It's away. It's good. He'll contribute to the scoreboard on that short attempt. Orlando Mare adds three points with a short confident kick there. Watch this. Doesn't hesitate, doesn't waver, just puts it through. Kicks that short provide their own kind of pressure. You don't want to mess up an easy one like that. Yeah, but he can kick those in his sleep, Dan. He doesn't get rattled too easily. The Bears hey. put the first points on the board. Three to well, zero. Jumped up quite a bit. Was it was just 303. 16 more seconds didn't come off the clock. The, the drive time might be a little confused. Strong kick. Oh, I put the I put that cord in a really bad spot. I threaded the cord through on the bottom or on the floor in a really bad spot. First down and 10 for the St. Louis Rams. See what they can come up with here on their second drive of the day. Let's see if they worked out the kinks here. Ball at the 22-yard line. Ball on the St. Louis, 22. Miller dropping back, fires, and that got caught. A little surprised. There was a lot of traffic in the area, but Rambo comes up with a nice reception, and just like that, it's another first down. Kenyon Rambo moves fast there to snag the ball after the tip. Ooh, it's all about great catch. Yeah, a great bank shot, too. Looked like uh, something for the NBA. Ball on the 37. And there it is. There's that jumbo set again. Or not jumbo set, but that. Uh, Good run by the four year man. I call it early. Miami. How do I. What? Hello? There's a nice eight yard gain for Edner and James. I'd like to see him get a little more involved in this game. See what St. Louis can do. They work their way down the field. Bunch formation is the word I was looking for. I formation. I formation. Couple of tight ends. One receiver there. Chicago brings up some extra defenders. Does a good job to come into the run. It's gonna be a it looked like they were trying to get that easy conversion for a first down, but instead they lose a little bit of traction. Third down and three. Big play for this Bears defense. A bigger play for St. Louis. I think you're very thankful that your defense only gave up three. But I don't think you really want to put that ball back in the Chicago Bears' hands. Because even though they only came away with three, they still took a ton of time off the clock. And if they were to get that drive again, that would uh, that would mean that St. Louis wouldn't get another shot with the ball. But it doesn't matter because the reception is made. They're in the Chicago territory. And it's a nice catch by Taylor. Jim Miller threw a solid pass into single coverage. Pass. Let's see it again. Right there. Yeah. Clean pass left no opening for it to be picked off at all. Yes, sir. He threw a guided missile there. Emphasis on guided. <laughs> he knew exactly where that pass was going. Ball at the 43-yard line. In motion. Miller, back. Miller drops and fires yet another one of those weird luckily for St. Louis there wasn't a defender on the back side helping that side of the field um, it's another one of those plays where the defender and the receivers hitboxes just get kind of they get smashed up against each other early in the round and completely throws off the timing as you can see with a kind of wild overthrow and a wilder dive for the ball. 
Miller again drops and fires, so timing off yet again. This is a finesse style offense, it seems, where timing is everything. I've seen this a lot with uh, Green Bay, especially with Aaron Rodgers, where if you can throw off the timing even half a second, the whole play sometimes feels like it just completely falls apart. Having the defenders who are willing to jam receivers at the line of scrimmage could set you up for success. And a, ooh, ooh, ooh. a brutal ball spot for Ricky Prohl, who I thought was going to be able to get there. It's a really nice play design. Again, they're using that bunch formation. They're freeing up receivers. And this is a this is the play you got to go for. You have to go for it here on fourth and goal. The fourth and one. Ah, they're going to go for it. Ah, field goal. Gross. Gross. Oh. Oh. Miss it. Cowards. Field goal is up. Field goal is good. Never doubt it. And he adds the points to That's the play that you, you want to go for. Fourth and inches. It's a brutal spot. And the pro looks like he's going to try and get up the field and get out of bounds. In today's NFL, you would likely see the receiver stretch the ball across the goal line. It was a great photo of a Bengals receiver. He was getting, I think it was the Christmas Eve game, where he was getting pulled and kind of spun out of bounds and swung the ball with his right arm over the pylon for the touchdown. It was awesome. Peterson is back to kick it away. Perfect kickoff. Whew. Mariners. He puts it out of the end zone. Great kickoff, and we'll start up at the twenty. George Kirby strikes out twelve. Three last time, Scoreless I'm, I'm two hitters. To see if they Damn, punch this drive that is what you're looking for. Ball at the Hopefully the bullpen line. can hold it. Opportunity for a save. Mariners three, Diamondbacks one. Over here we have a three-three game. From 30 years ago or 20 years ago. Gross. Don't like that I said 30 years ago. I was only four. Three to three. Two minute warning. Jimmy Smith, three receptions, 31 yards, 10.3 yard average. Sharp goes in motion. Going with a pitch to the outside, trying to find some room, but nowhere to go. They've had a little more success in the passing game, but I appreciate that they're sticking with the run game and trying to get it going. You got to stick with what's hot. Throw this ball. Cordell Stewart's probably the best quarterback Chicago's had, maybe ever. There's a nice run off the left side for number 45, whose last name I just cannot pronounce. Mafaala? 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 That's only half of it. There's two halves of the last name. His first name is Chris. Ball on the 30. Talked about it in the last game, but this is where the clock management stuff does get a little weird. It's a good first down from Chicago. I guess I'm okay a little bit with the running the clock down, not using a run. Oh, or not using a timeout, excuse me, as they get a big run into St. Louis territory. I think this is where you pop a timeout. Mama Atu Ma'afa'ala. It's a really, really nice run. Stepped on his own player's leg. Took out that guy's knee. And just no... Urgency, no sense of urgency nice here. On the last play. We'll have another first down. First and ten from the 48 yard line. Taking their sweet time. Like there aren't just 30 seconds left. Nice grab. Inside the 35. There's a good use of a timeout. I think you use a timeout after the run play. Check this out. Totally threads the needle. There are two defenders there, Peter, and there was definitely it's a really nice catch by Amani Tumor. There was not a lot of room for, for anything. Twenty three seconds left. Hey, double, double. 
First down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Tipped and knocked away. Smith, the intended receiver there. Thought twice before throwing into double coverage. That could have easily been picked off. Ball at the 33 yard line. Teddy Bruski, three tackles, one tip. They're going with three wideouts. Stewart drops back. Throws. Stewart with a completion. He's inside the 10 5. Touchdown, Chicago. 14 seconds to go here in the half. That is a back breaking play. The St. Louis defense bit up a little bit, and that allowed Jimmy Smith easy. They're allowed for an easy completion to Jimmy Smith. I said that kind of weird. I was going to say, like, easy access, but that didn't make a lot of sense. So we backed off of it. Murray lines up for the point after. It's up. He adds the extra point. Kick is up, kick is good. 10 3 to go. Or 10 3 with 14 seconds to go. Excuse me. The Bears take the lead with that score. 10 to 3. Sets up and will kick All right, away. Seattle picks up their second victory of that uh, the of the Arizona series. Congratulations to them; they are in first place the AO, uh, in the AL West. A lot of teams are a lot of oh, a huge run back. Oh, but he made an unnecessary stutter step. I think if you just kind of stay with your speed, try to get that outside edge. Try and cut it up field, but one person well, hit L2 the on really the controller. For one more play before halftime, let's see what they do with it. And it's first All down and the 10. 25. Now, these plays with seven seconds left have been a little dangerous for the defenses. What we're probably going to see here is Jim Miller drop back, throw off his back foot, where this becomes a little weird. He set his feet that time. Where it becomes a little weird is for that exact reason. They're going to get another shot at it because it didn't take long enough. Chicago is going to go for the tip, and there's nobody behind. All the receivers somehow get behind the defense, which is a little surprising because how because of how consistently Chicago ten. has been jamming the Rams receivers at the line. They're going to have another shot at it, but look, it is, this could be a play that... There he goes, Jim McMiller there, or Jim Miller. There it is. Okay, it was exactly what I said it was going to be. It's a throw off the back foot. The computer is going to go for the tip ball or the interception. If they miss it, it is an easy touchdown. In the league, and check this out: six two two ten. He's able to shadow the tallest, biggest receivers in the game. That will do it for the first half. The score: ten to three. The ESPN halftime update with Clark Dishman is coming up next. Welcome to this playoff edition of the ESPN Halftime Update. Here's a breakdown of the numbers from the first half. The Bears come into halftime congratulating their defense for shutting down the run. Impressive so far, and a safe bet to be impressive in the second there, half. Yeah, have it. There Jimmy are your Smith stats. Balls for a total of Jimmy Miller, or Jimmy Smith, excuse down. me, hot at the half. Jim ESPN Miller, hot at the Jimmy player. Smith. That's our halftime report. I'm Clark Congratulations, Dishman, reminder, Mariners, on another victory. I think that puts you at, at 15 and 12 on the Let's season. Three games over 500. That's good stuff. They have sole possession of first place in the American League West. Big series coming up against Houston. Actually, they have a series against Atlanta, and then Houston, and then Minnesota for a little bit of a road trip. It's 10-3 Chicago, and they are going to get the ball back first here in our fantasy football. Kicking it all the way back, and he'll take it from the 1, past the 15 to the 20, and he'll get to the 26, maybe the 27, depending on how they want to spot it. It's first down and 10. And last time out, these guys went straight down the field for a touchdown. Let's see if they can repeat that performance. Ball at the 26-yard line. Let's give the fans a show. Put the points on the board. They have four receivers in. 
Ball in Chicago 26, and they will lose about a yard there. Big ball in the Chicago 25 after the nice. Nice defensive stay in there. Chicago's made their game work uh, with the passing game. I do appreciate they're trying the running game. They had one nice run there in the first half. Stewart drops and fires. It's intercepted. Oh, a huge pick. He's back inside the 10. Oh, we're actually going to mark him right at the 10 yard line as he stepped out of bounds. That is a terrible throw from Cordell Stewart. It's an excellent defensive play. Just right in front of Shannon Sharp. It's a, it's a terrible throw. Double coverage? Get out of here. Yeah, big play, Dan. Close game so far. And. Even though there's plenty of time left, they'd love to score on this drive. Ball at the 10 yard line. Miller dropping back, firing in zone, caught touchdown. We have a flag on the play. Wow, they're going to call pass interference. Didn't matter. Peterson will line up for the point after. You better watch it. And just like that, we are going to have a tie game. Great defensive play, terrible offensive decision. That leads to the quick strike for the St. Louis Rams, and it is 10-10. One play, 10 yards, three seconds. That's it. Inside the uh, end zone. Going to be returned. Oh, the 20 to the 25 before he's taken down. He's a big bruising guy to have back there, but I don't know that he's the guy you want to have back there. Uh, I am going to pause this for just a second. Because I feel like there's something buzzing in my ear. Uh, why is that not? Hold on. Now it's not showing on my monitor. There we go. Move that cord so I don't bump it. Okay. Here we go. We're back. Answer right back with a touchdown of their own here. Ball on the twenty-five. They're going with the on. A loss of three. Wow, the deep is great. Speed on Chicago that is committed to this running game, which at times I appreciate, but St. Louis has really stepped up to try to make sure that that is not the case. They will lose to Cordell Stewart, but they will not lose to Chris. They line up with a Mafa Ala Mata. Ah, two. Mafala. Mm. Stewart, Stewart dropping back. Throws out. Nice catch out of the backfield. A good job to get up field. I love this play. That's exactly what you want. See if you can use St. Louis's aggression against them. Allen's an easy find out of the backfield and does an excellent job catching that ball and getting up field. No time to celebrate. No, because he's already thinking about how much farther he can go. And he goes a pretty long way, Peter. Ball at the 49 yard line. First down and 10. Stewart, Stewart drops back and throws over the middle. It's 
Incomplete. Had a hand on it, but couldn't come up with the reception. It's going to be second down and ten. Chicago could use a response here. All on the 49. They are kind of one of those teams that's letting their opponents stick around. It was a really good opportunity for them to to get that double dip. Stewart's going to drop back. He throws and finds a receiver that time. The receiver holds on. It's Shannon Sharp with a nice reception. And it's first and ten. He sends a telegram to his man for the completion. Take a look. There's the throw right to him. This passing offense spends so much time in practice running plays and patterns that it's, it's almost instinctive at this point. Nice completion there to give him a first down and ten. All at the 39 yard Nine for 13. One of four incompletions is that interception, but still looking pretty good. Just shy of 150 yards and does have the touchdown toss. Stewart, Stewart drops back. It's short. It's tipped and inter incomplete. Did not know what was happening there. Intercepted and caught. I don't know. No wonder he threw it. They gave they showed that animation. It's that like kind of tip like tip but then bobble and catch on the defensive side, but he didn't come away with the ball. Very weird play there. Cordell Stewart lucky did not have thrown his second interception of the day. Stewart dropping back, throws over the middle, that's intercepted. Wow. What a turn of events. Stewart got lucky on the last play and made a horrible decision yet again. St. Louis capitalized on the previous, the previous completion or the previous uh, turnover. Do they have it in them again? Five wide. Miller throws it, and uh-oh, this is dangerous inside the 40, and he'll get taken out at the 37-yard line. Rambo. Chicago is settling out to try to get to the quarterback, but Miller is making sure that that uh, pass is way uh, well out of his hands by the time the defense get there. This gets there. This game does not give up a lot of sacks, I have noticed. It's, it's very rare that we see sacks in these games. Ball at the Under 210 to go here in quarter number three. Seven for 13, a touchdown and a They're pick. Miller, drop Miller dropping back, fires, and it's batted down. Number 42 got burned on the last play, but does not get burned on this one. Second and 10. On that baby, there was no way that was going to be a completion. Second and ten. Miller dropping back, throws over the middle, finds Prola. Gets the reception. It's third down and one. It'll make this third down a whole lot easier coming up. One yard to go. Third and less than a yard. Three receptions, 30 yards for an even 10 yard average. In See what they want to do here on third down and one. Third down and not even one. They're going to go with James out of the backfield. He's going to pick up way more than one. He has a solid gain inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. Edwin James looks like a human bowling ball on this play. Get a load of this run. He catches the cover off guard. Did a little bit of everything on that. Dodge, duck, dip, dived, and dodge. Dove. Dodge, duck, dip, dove, and dodge. The five Ds of dodgeball. That movie's coming up on 20 years old. Ball on the 17. If you could dodge a wrench, you could dodge a ball. One man back. Payton, in motion. Miller, drops back. Miller dropping back, throws, and it's caught. 
That's him. It's an incredibly generous spot, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. How was that a catch? Not only how was that a catch, but how was that like how was that ball spotted in that location? Second down and eight. We're dropping back, fires, the receiver beats the defender to the inside. Proel coming up with another reception and gets him a first and goal. This is a completely different St. Louis Rams team, and I just worry that they're going to get to the Super Bowl and get absolutely demolished. However, with the way that they have been defending the run, I think you could make an argument that they have a shot to maybe do something against Eddie George, but we'll see what... Cleveland wants to do. Ideally, they would take the same or a similar, I should say, game plan. Feed Eddie George early, see if he can rip off some big runs and go from there. Otherwise, you're uh, you're relying on Tim Couch to get you some points, and that does not feel like a good spot to be in. There's a look at the stats. Very even across the board. Even the disparities in passing versus rushing is pretty equal. Chicago with a touch more yards. But it doesn't matter when you've turned the ball over a couple of times here in this second half. It's first and goal for St. Louis as we start quarter number four. Another 10-yard reception. Ricky Prowell not only averaging 10 yards, but that's all he's getting. It's 10-yard increments or bust. Don't love the play there from St. Louis. Really well covered on the back end by the Chicago Bears. That's a completion. Second and goal. James untouched into the end zone. Jump in for style. Don't think it would have affected the touchdown or the uh, whether he got the touchdown or not. But there's that little... We'll jump into the end zone. Big celebration. 14 unanswered here for the St. Louis Rams. Peterson lines up for the point after. Kick is up. And the kick is good. The Rams, with that score, take the lead. They're up 17 to 10. Eight play, 64 yard drive, 228 off the clock. And Chicago will kick this one away. is in some trouble here at home. It's off. Credit to the St. Louis Rams defense. Their offenses look pretty okay. Uh, but their defense has done a great job to give them a couple of extra possessions off of those turnovers. The offense has complemented that defense by getting those big points off of those turnovers. And yet again, we find Chicago out on the field following an interception. There's that bunch formation. That somehow missed... There were like three receivers in the area and somehow they missed all of them. Yeah, this guy just rolled the dice on that pass. Second and ten. Second and ten. Going with a run right up the middle. He'll pick up six and set up a third down and pretty manageable third and four. This one off his right guard and made a pretty nice run. Good yards off second down. Third and four. Just put it right now. Stewart dropping back and fires. How was that not completed? How was that not a complete pass? He was right there. Just turned the other way. What in the world happened there? Chicago Bears are falling apart in this NFC title game. 
They are going to go for it here on fourth and four. I don't know that I love it at this stage in the game, but I kind of like it as well. Stewart throws, and he finds a receiver. Couldn't break free of the secondary, but it's a huge completion to Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Well, they have, when they had to have it, and absolutely had to have it, they find Jimmy Smith. A little bit of contact right at the line of scrimmage. We've seen a lot of jamming. That's a really nice job by Jimmy Smith to make sure to secure that catch. Keep this drive alive. Otherwise, you're giving them a free field goal, and you're putting yourself down by two scores. First and ten. If they didn't convert that, it's guaranteeing your opponents a score. Ball at the 45 yard line. Oh. 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 hurry up offense after the three yard run. Stewart drops back, short pass off the back foot, caught. Shannon Sharp inside the 30, down to the 20 or near the 20. He'll step out of the 21 and a half yard line. And the Chicago Bears offense getting cooking a little bit. It looks awful, kind of gross. A little scary, but they're figuring it out. First down and 10. 11 for 19. Just shade under 200 yards. One touchdown, two picks. Stewart with a quick throw. The St. Louis Rams are giving them so much room to run. They are not being aggressive at all at trying to get the tackle behind the line to gain. Kind of just angle them out and hope that that's not going to create a disastrously big play for the Chicago offense. It's a very weird offensive strategy. It doesn't make your defensive strategy. It does not make sense. There's that bunch formation again. Smith stays on his feet. Six catches, almost uh, nearly 100 yards, 36 a yak. Stewart throws, it's caught, touchdown, Chicago. That is the drive you are looking for to potentially save your season. That's not me trying to be exaggeratory. That's literally what it is. They went for it on fourth and four. If you don't get that fourth and four, you're done. Mare will line up for the point after. Seventeen, sixteen. Extra point pending. The kick is up. The kick is good. Ball knotted up at seventeen with three fifteen to go in the NFC title game. The Bears headlock the game with that score. That's a huge drive. They've given up like fourteen straight points, I believe. Um. Nine play, 80 yard drive. I think they got into a nice rhythm. It's, sometimes it's what works for me when I play these games. Obviously, professional quarterback. But sometimes it's nice to just go in that hurry up offense. Don't overthink it and just like, I want to run this play and I want to do it now and we're going to go, go, go. Eliminate that overthinking and see if you can get into a rhythm in that way. Sounds kind of weird, but I think it worked for Chicago on that previous drive. First and ten for the Rams. They would definitely like to score on this drive right here. There's not enough time left for mistakes. Ball on the 36. James with the ball. James with the run off the right side. Good job to stay up on his feet a couple of times. I like the run call there. Just get it rolling a little bit. Keep this clock. Get it moving. Ball at the 41 yard line. In motion. Second and five, pitch to the outside. James picks up three. Tries to fight for a little bit more, but can't stay on his feet. And they, I think, are going to run this down to the two-minute warning. This is a big play for the Chicago Bears defense. If they can get the ball back, kick a field goal, steal a win here to go to the Super Bowl. On the St. Louis Rams side, maybe take it to the two-minute warning, get a play figured out. 
Oh, they're going to run it at 201. And they'll run James right up the middle again. Does a nice job. They're going for those ankle tackles. He's doing a terrific job staying on his feet. Edrin James. And this is going to keep the clock. Well, that didn't lead. They'll keep the drive alive, excuse me. Two minute warning with 157 to go here. All on the 49. Miller drops back and fires. Pro with a nice reception. That's what you're looking for. First down. Nice completion here. Take a look. There's the throw right in between the numbers. He had them lined up just right, and they connected for a decent game. I think this is the kind of drive you want if you're St. Louis. Slow, methodical. You're picking up first downs. You're getting some bigger plays, but you're kind of nickel and diming your way down the field. I think you want to give the Chicago offense the ball back. Hold it. This is it. This is the final possession. On the flip side, if you get a good stop here, maybe consider taking a timeout. Just kidding. Don't take a timeout. They will take a timeout. Second down of one, I guess. Nice yards there off the first down play. I guess you're going to have to take a time out there regardless. A minute and 20 on the game clock. Second down and one jumbo formation with two receivers to the top side of the screen. James bounces it off the outside or bounces off the left side, excuse me. Finds a little bit of room, picks up the first down. That's a huge first down. Chicago will burn their second nice timeout. To take this one to the outside. You know they've been hammering it up the middle of this drive, and the D didn't see this one coming. The clock is at 1:15. Miller rolls outside, fires, and that is somehow that is somehow a reception. Unbelievable that that was a catch. We're gonna get a look at the replay here, but I can't believe this was caught. The replay didn't even really help. It's oof, a literal perfect throw. So Chicago takes their third and final timeout. 109, first and goal. The Rams have a first down. It's their fourth of this drive, and they keep pounding away. Miller drops back, fires, it's intercepted. Oh my gosh, why did he throw the ball? He threw it. All they have to do is take like two knees. There's no one there. Yeah, they really put the thumb screws on him, Peter. I think he popped it up a little early. We've mentioned, I've mentioned it throughout this game. There has been a lot of jamming at the line of scrimmage. These, both of these teams, uh, their timing with their receivers has been off. St. Louis might have just thrown their season away. Cordell Stewart drops back. Oh, lucky that he did not come up with a reception on that one. Second down and 10. Chicago looking like they're going to just try and bomb it down the field. I get so scared when they like they go up with one arm. He completely takes them out of the play. Second and 10. There's that bunch formation, bottom of the screen. Cordell Stewart throws and finds a receiver. Amani Sumer is up to the 30, past the 35, and I think he's tackled out of bounds to the 36-yard line, steps out and saves the Bears. Well, they don't have any timeouts to save the Bears some clock. This bunch formation has gotten both defenses at times for really big gains against them. Cleansing the palate before a big meal of a run. That is beautiful. I've been, you know, collecting some food metaphors for you. I can't, I didn't even think about it. Look at this, no sacks so far. I don't know that we've really seen that specific problem. Oh my goodness, Chicago. 
And they are getting the chunk plays and they are working their way down this field. Famaatsu Laofaala. He's trying to think. Oh, I want to say it was Madden, maybe? I'm trying to think of where that, there, and that really Buccaneers the game was. Play. We've seen some real bad plays. Really, really bad plays. But this game, I think, has been a lot better about that. We've seen a lot of weird clock management stuff. Like, for example, throwing when the opposing team doesn't have any timeouts. Chicago does need to pay attention to the clock here. They're down to 40 seconds. It's a long field goal from here. They need probably 15 yards, maybe 10. Stewart drops back, throws it, caught, but it's jarred and loose the hit. Huge on the back side there. That might be a, like a rookie Jimmy Green. He didn't let nothing get through. It's now third and six. Third down and six. The throw tipped and batted away. The second incompletion in a row. Well, they went for the whole enchilada and only got a little bit of melted cheese. Mm -hmm. Kudos to the defense for the key third down stop. Mm -hmm. I love melted cheese. And they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it on fourth and six. No one in the backfield. Five receivers. St. Louis tries to bring some extra pressure. He steps up and fires. It's incomplete. And they couldn't get it done. They're gonna have to this is such a bizarre down. game. Chicago converted a way more important fourth down earlier in this game, but could not come up with that one. A couple of nice hits by this St. Louis defense. And they're able to stay alive in this wild NFC title game. They line up with three wide outs. Miller fades back. Miller drops back, fires. He has a receiver. They're going to have to burn a timeout quick. That's when you get a little, a little dangerous. You need a big play right there. I don't think that is what you're looking for, a seven-yard gain. Uh, I think we're going to overtime. St. Louis throw. <laughs> oh, man. If he does not get a hand on that ball, it's going to get real dicey. If they, if he doesn't get a hand on the ball, because either he's going to go for a touchdown or he might run out of time, he could come up just short and, like, I don't know. It's a huge defensive play by Chicago. Miller drops back, fires over the middle, caught, and it's incomplete. Another pass with the hands on it. Charred loose by a big hit. This is an unreal game. St. Louis should have punched their ticket to the Super Bowl. But we're going to overtime. Give us tail. They call tail. So the Bears will receive. They had some some bad plays there at the end of the game. Peterson signals the referee, and we're ready for overtime. Good kick. So here's the run back. Oh, it's a huge run back. Bad time to give up a big run back. He got it all the way up to the 37 yard line or something like that. It's a really, really nice run back. See what they want to do here. Let's see if they can punch through this time. Ball on the 32. He's an owl fan. Give him some cheer back. He's back wide. 
Stewart throws and finds a reception. It's a nice completion out past the 45-yard line. First down and 10. So they got it to the 32. I apologize. I thought it was the 37 yard line. Yeah, and with double coverage, I'm really surprised the pass came his way at all. Ball at the 46 yard line. Cordell Stewart, 16, or yeah, 16 of 28. 262, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Looking for that game-winning drive in overtime to go to the Super Bowl. The Bears find another completion, seven yards into St. Louis territory. Got some nice yards there off the first down play, and that really opens things up a bit for this next one. It's second and about three. Nice play by that St. Louis defense, forcing a third down and six. A nice play brought in uh, both linebackers off that edge. And what the heck happened back there? Number 21 kind of just bounced off of them. We probably saw big Teddy Bruski coming in and thought, you know what, I'd like to stay alive for the Super Bowl if we can get there. I think you have this under control. Five tackles today for Teddy Bruski. Stewart drops back, fires. Oh, he stays on his feet. That foot tackle animation has been so consistent in this game. Uh, I think I feel like it's the most we've seen it. I, I we've seen it to the point where I'm noticing it. There's the catch. Does a good job just beating the guy in his zone. It's first down and ten. A couple minutes gone here in the overtime period. On the 42. They go with the I formation. Pitch to the outside. Tries to find some room out there, but they'll give him one. Chicago, second down and nine. Probably need those nine yards to get into field goal range. It's a gain of seven as we approach two minutes to go here in overtime number one. Completion for several yards. Not enough for the first, but still a nice gain. It's third and two. Huge play here for this St. Louis defense. Can they hold them? They'll force a 50-yard field goal. It might be a 51-yard field goal. Here's a timeout taken. The Rams take a timeout, even though I don't think they need to, unless they're trying to ice the kicker. Fourth and two, Olindo Mare. First kick made today was 22 yards. This one is from about the 40-yard line, so it's 50. 50-yard 50 try here in Chicago for the Super Bowl. It's no good. It's no good. Lindo Mare has just got to feel horrible. Had a shot at giving his guys the lead, and boy, it just fell short. Biggest drive of the game right here, Dan. They can put this. Hold on, can we take a look at the replay? They didn't. They didn't show us a replay. Oh, now I have to fight my PlayStation 2 controller. <laughs> I 
Hold on, I'm trying to trying to give us a better look at it. But it looks like it was all kind of just a bad. Oops, that's the wrong way. Right? How did that miss? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, boy, that, that really just missed. God. Oof. So close. Oh my goodness. The weird thing is like, it doesn't, like the control stick doesn't bother me when I'm playing like driver, but in this game it is like, just, ugh. It's awful. So Miller's back out on the field. He threw away his team's opportunity to go to the Super Bowl earlier. Let's see if he can redeem himself with the drive here toward the end of the overtime period to get St. Louis into the big game. We saw the missed by inches. I think that honestly that that play that happened beforehand was only about a half yard loss, but that might have been the difference between a made field goal and a missed field goal. Fantastic play. Again, like, ridiculously lucky that they're even in this position. To, like, be able to kick a field goal for a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Unbelievably terrible play calling for St. Louis with under a minute to go. There's a nice throw and a reception. Stutter steps his way down to the 31-yard line. About a 47-yard field goal from here. If you want to try and pick up maybe another 10, but I want to be very careful with how you do it. This is one of the teams that is a little more irritating with how they play their, or how they call their plays. I know it's the greatest show on turf. They still had Marshall Falk back in the day, and they do have Edner and James in this game, and it's a little annoying to watch them throw the ball all over the yard. It's first and 10 from the 31. Miller drops back, fires, it's caught. Tackled. I don't know where number 42 was going. We have seen a lot of defensive backs just kind of beat, even though they're trying to get that that contact at the line, and then you see a, the Y button arm swipe, and it's all over. So here we go, 17 seconds to go in the first overtime period. St. Louis lining up for the kick that they should have kicked about five in-game minutes ago. It's up, it's good, and St. Louis is going to the Super Bowl. Wow. So the Rams get the victory that they should have already had. Chicago could not make them live to regret the absolutely heinous play calling. Up next, the ESPN wow. St. Louis 20, Chicago 17, and we are set. Rams, Browns. The Rams completely arrested the ground game today. Just look at the statistics. Their front four manhandled the line of scrimmage and was a big part in the win. Corey Chavis what? made his presence. Did you say the ground game? And ended Did you watch the same game? Tackles. Corey Chavis. We'll get our ESPN two tips, eight game. tackles. Well, that will do it for now. Make sure you tune in next week for the Super Bowl right here on ESPN. And I'm that Mark is Dishman. what we are going we'll to be doing then. next. We're going to exit this. Take a look at the schedule. We'll mark it there. And it'll be Rams, Browns in just a moment. I'm going to hop up, use the restroom. And uh, for Twitch, just stick around. I'll be right back. For YouTube, it'll just be a quick pause and an unpause. Grab a fresh drink and uh, we'll be right back. All right. We are back with more uh, NFL action here. I have decided that we're not going to worry about the Pro Bowl. We're going to go ahead and just wrap it up with the Super Bowl. Uh, it's getting a little bit late, and we are also, uh, while we're kind of running on time, the games themselves have been running a little bit long because of the overtime game, and I think the other game was a little bit slow as well. So 
We're going to wrap up season 20 with just a three game episode. We'll do the Super Bowl and we'll call it there because I probably I don't really need to be up until like 11, 1130 doing this. So we'll do the Super Bowl. We'll wrap it up and then we will uh, maybe see this series return sometime in the fall. But for right now, let's do that Super Bowl. Rams, Browns, I would say the Browns probably the favorite in this Super Bowl, which is a bit of an odd statement or a, an absurd statement. Welcome to the but the way that they dismantled the a team that is similarly ESPN. like overall ranked to the Brown or to the Rams, excuse me. NFC. Oof. I don't, I don't know. The also, the Rams ranks Johnson. shockingly low. I don't understand the overalls. They don't make any sense to me. They possess the ability to shut down most that was a that's a it's actually actually, actually a very good Rams team. It has one kind of weak spot. To see how it all turns out. What? Hello and welcome to the anyway, Super welcome Bowl. to Qualcomm Stadium. We have Here the Super Bowl. Stadium. I'm Dan Stevens, and it's very exciting. Peter, who's gonna stand out I think I already have this picture of the Super Bowl like logo. Brian Urlacher and Butch Davis getting the highlight here. Unfortunately, no like special presentation for the Super Bowl, which is unfortunate. But what are you gonna do? It's a mixture of good play calling, good execution, and good players. Well, tough to beat. On the other side, we have the guy who makes his coach look good. Brian Urlacher comes in showing a knack for knowing when the play is going to be a run and when it's going to be a pass. Defensively in the postseason, he's averaged four tackles and the occasional pickoff. We'll see how it works out, Peter. Let's go to the coin toss. All right. One last coin toss. Well, not, maybe not. Maybe one last coin toss. Maybe we have more coin tosses. Who knows? The way the Rams called the end of their game in the NFC title. Oof. Who knows? The Rams. So St. Louis is going to get the ball first here for the Super Bowl, and we will find out who wins. Random rosters, season number six, coming to a close. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Enjoyed the ride. Carney, it's ready for the opening kickoff. And we are underway here in San Diego. A couple of yards deep in the end zone. And he'll get tackled out at the 22-yard line. Contacted at like the 19 and did a good job to fall forward for a few extra yards. It's first down and 10. Fall on the 22. Here he is, Jim Miller, the St. Louis Rams. He'll drop back, looks and rips it down the field. Oh, it's a big play for the big play for the Rams, and a lot of L2 R2 button pushes as he was sidestepping all over the place. Taylor makes the catch and quickly upgrades that play from coach to first class. There's the reception. He sees he's got some room to move, and he takes it, Dan. Takes it for a big-time game, Peter. He is well, he's so good at finding those opportunities and then exploiting them. The Rams, after the big pass last play, will have a first down. Taylor is wide right. And we'll see Exciting start for this Rams team. Three wide receivers. Going with it. Oh my goodness, it's intercepted immediately after that. I thought the Rams were off to a good start. I guess technically they were, but it's right this time on the Browns defense who picked off the Indianapolis Colts and their quarterback who was Brian Greasy. I think threw four interceptions in the previous game. The Browns defense getting in on it early. With a nice no, pick. The offense has to make that interception count. Let's see if they can punch this one into the end zone. Ball at the 33-yard line. You may have to fall now, but I'm getting it right back. Through. Tight left. Tight left. Smith with the carry. Nice tackle. Going with a run play off that left sideline. Really nowhere to go. So we actually won't get a look at the uh, Rams or the Rams offense or the Browns defense because of the interception. Eric Molds, Eric Molds, Terrence Mathis, Wesley Walls. Postseason, he's averaged 54 yards on four catches a game. 
And lastly, the man who calls the plays and the guys who back him up. Eddie George puts on a good show with these other two. Rushing the ball. In Eddie the George had a monster game in the, the AFC title game. game. I'd like to okay, see Cleveland to stick action. with that. Stay on the ground. Pick up big chunks of yards. You can maybe try and put the St. Louis team away early like you did Indianapolis last week. However, St. Louis is a lot feistier than Indianapolis, and they're better than their overall rank would indicate. Second down and 10. Molds in motion. Molds in motion. Couch drops back, looks and fires into a... Into double coverage and somehow Walls comes down with it. It's a nine yard gain and it sets up a very manageable third down and one. It's a defensive line for the St. Louis Rams. Is that a Sean who spells his name correctly? Is the man who brings the hurt here. Finally, Peter, the secondary. Rodney Harrison flies around the field and gets in receivers' faces. Now back to the game. Third and one. Third down and one. Offset eye formation. A jumbo package. They're going to pitch it to the outside. Oh my goodness, it's a terrific second wave. That is a fantastic second effort from that St. Louis defense. I thought Eddie George had it easy. He bullied the first man down. The second guy came flying in and knocked him back. Huge play for St. Louis. They are going to go for the field goal. The kick is up. Kick is good. The snap and the hold looked a little weird. But Cleveland gets on the board first. They only cash in for three off the turnover. Three points. Oh, nothing wrong with that. He kicked that one as naturally as if it had been half the distance. And he'd be that cool if it was twice the distance. This guy is great. The Browns strike first in the game. So 231 here in quarter number one. The four play nine yard scoring drive. Took a minute and 21 seconds. It's a big swing off that turnover there. See what the Rams want to do for. Nice kick. Uh, what's it called? Nixon has it. That was a nice play. First down and First ten. Down. See what the Rams want to draw up for their second possession. They trust Jim Miller with it in his hands. So they try to hand the ball off to Edner and James, which I think they should probably do more anyway. Miller drops back. Oh, he almost threw another interception. That was a terrible throw to Ricky Prohl. I mean, he was blanketed by multiple defenders, and Miller overthrew him anyway. What a near disaster. What is going on? St. Louis offense needs to settle down a little bit. I would recommend handing the ball off. The greatest show on turf isn't going to do that. And instead, Miller's going to drop back and fire it to Pearl right, uh, right away. It's a nice reception there. And the first down in 10. Ricky Pearl is going to make the catch, but watch what he does afterwards. He's got it, and now he's going to get more. Oh, it's always nice to have a receiver that can pick up eight or nine more yards after the catch. Oh, definitely. Ball on the 46. Payton in motion. Miller. First and 10 from the 46. Miller drops and fires again into a cluttered area and nearly throws another. And throws a near another near interception. I mean, just it's a disaster to start this game for Jim Miller. Second and 10. Going with their tight end right. 
Second and 10 as Miller drops and fires over the middle. Crowell finds himself open. Gets walloped on the reception but holds on to the ball. It's first and 10. And this Rams offense into a bit of a rhythm, though it is a little erratic at times. The throw right to him. This passing offense spends so much time in practice running plays and feels like Jim Miller. Jim Miller uh, at this point. feels like Jim Miller is even either finding a receiver who's open by five yards or covered by five dudes. I, it's the one or the other. Ball at the 39 yard line. Just one man in the backfield. First down and 10 inside the 40. We're going to go with a handoff to James. Picks up a couple of yards. Speaking of athletes with the last name James, the Lakers managed to not get swept by the Denver Nuggets. They lived to see another game when just about everybody had written them out. Written them off, I should say. And maybe deservedly so. Joker couldn't put away LeBron this time around. Second down and eight. Miller drops back and fires over the middle. It's Bubba Franks. He'll pick up three. Four? Three or four? Sets up with the manageable third down and three as we have the last 30 seconds of quarter number one. My favorite part about this game is the fact that the Seahawks are in the NFC, but they're on the AFC side of the flags here in San Diego. From the 32. And then with a run for James. James bulldozes, uh, bulldozes a man over. Picks up the first down, and that should be the final play of the first quarter. This O-line's been opening up some nice holes in the middle these past few plays. That's why I like this last run. Keep attacking the center of the line until they can stop you. It's the end of the first quarter. The Browns currently enjoying a slight advantage, but it's anybody's game. 76 Three yards zero. already, 69 nice through the air. Nine total yards for Cleveland. They haven't had the ball that much. So they do, do give them credit for a minute 53, which... Hmm. That's a lot of time. Ball at the 27 yards. The start of the second quarter here, and it's a first down and 10 inside the 30 for the St. Louis Rams. Taylor goes in motion. Miller, back. Miller drops back, fires over the middle. It's caught. Driven forward with that tackle animation for your, for a few extra yards is Taylor. Seven on the catch. It'll be second and three. It's second and about three. Eight plays, 53 yards, 225. James off the left side. Pushes his way through, picks up five and a first down. And gets the first down. Well, they run it around the outside, and the defense isn't ready for it. It's almost, so almost getting to haircut time here. I can tell. I can tell when, like, I put my headphones on and my <laughs> hair bugs my ears. I'm like, oh, that's the time. It's time to go to the old cut and corral. First down and ten. Miller drops back and fires. It's intercepted again. It's Bullware, his third interception of the video. St. Louis is making unbelievably bad play calls, and their quarterback is making terrible decisions. Again, they're either five yards open or five guys are in the area, and that time there were five guys in the area. Bullware with a ridiculous interception. Looking for Ricky Prowell, and again, the Cleveland defense comes up huge with a turnover. Wow. St. Louis, again, super lucky to even be in this position. Come up with an overtime win that they should have won in regulation. Couch rolls and fires. He almost threw an interception. I believe that's Rodney Harrison on the back end there. He had the receiver he was looking for wide open, just needed a little bit more air under that ball. And it's a big play down the sideline. Instead, it's a, for, a terrific play for the Rams defense, and it is indeed Rodney Harrison, who for some reason doesn't get a credit for a tip on that play, but whatever. 
Second down and ten. Couch throws over the middle, finds a wide open receiver. Receiver, excuse me. And he's about half yard, half a yard short. This is where Cleveland has struggled at times. Uh, it has been these short down or short distance downs. Let's see if they draw up here on third down and one. I would suggest hand the ball off to Eddie George. Offset eye formation, one receiver, top side of the screen. Pitch to the outside. Breaks it back in, finds a little bit of a lane and gets into the secondary. A huge gain out to the 43-yard line. That's what you're looking for if you're Cleveland. Look at the vision to cut it back inside. Walls with a nice block. Good job by George to stay on his feet and keep on trucking. When you get a cheese stick lodged up your nostril. I'm sure there's a story there, but if you don't mind, let's move on. Ball on the 43. First down and 10. Couch, short drop, fires, and I think they did the same thing. The Rams did the same thing to the Bears in the NFC title game, and just kind of jamming them at the line of scrimmage. I can see a little bug. I get scared. I see a little bug floating around, and I feel like a big inhale coming because I'm talking. I'm like, oh, boy. Look out. They have three receivers in. Second down in 10 with an offset eye formation. Deep drop for Couch. He throws an interception. He throws it right back to the St. Louis Rams. It's a terrible throw. And Takeo Spikes comes up with a huge swing there. Spikes dissected that Whew. play instantly. It's all about knowing where to make the interception. Check it out. Oh, great. I mean, that's just an Absolutely awful throw. It's way there. off the Field mark for 86, and it's way to too short for 80. The physical ability to get the ball wow. Well, so with 2.30 to go here in the second quarter, St. Louis back with the ball after a big interception. See if they, again, if they do they trust Jim Miller? Do they switch their plan at all? They're only down three, but he's ended both of their drives with interceptions. They will stick with James on the ground. He's been effective if lightly used in these couple of games here. Second down and three. Edwin James gets away with one there as the defense fails to just step up and make the play, Dan. You call that a tackle, please? The team mascot hits harder than that, huh? Yeah, come on. A little bit more than a half-hearted effort if you want to stop this guy. Ball on the 37. Second down and three after the nice run for Edner and James. That'll take us down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go here in the first half of the Super Bowl. Super Bowl number six for us here on YouTube.com slash Rex or Twitch.tv slash Rex. However you're watching, thank you for watching. Be sure you're following or subscribed on whatever platform you're choosing to watch on. Thank you again. There's a little throw to the short side. I love that right there. Coyle with a terrific catch and run up the near sideline. And that's what you're looking for. Short, easy completion. Again, five yards of space. Bam, up the field. Let your, let your receivers make a play. Ball at the 18 yard line. Three receptions, 54 yards already. Payton goes in motion. Second down and 10. Or first and 10, excuse me, inside the 20. Oh, a, just a straight run right at the ball. Almost intercepted, but. on the 18. Second and 10 from the 18-yard line. 
Oh, driven on again. It's a good job by this Browns defense. They're bending, but they're not breaking. They made two terrific plays to stop drives with interceptions. And a couple of nice deflections there on first and second and ten. First and second down, I should say. Renal Smith. Take a look at his highlights right there. Tackle and a couple of tips. Third and ten. They roll him out. Fires in zone, incomplete. Couldn't keep him in bounds. And it's fourth down and 10. Cleveland stands tall defensively and with 146. We should see a tie game. Barring any sort of weird, wacky wildness. Kick is up. Kick is good. And with 142, we have a tie game. 3-3. Three, three. Todd Peterson nails it for three. Great kick. It's all about focus. Without question, Peter. You know, he's got to factor in things like wind and weather, but ultimately it just, for him, comes down to the ball and the uprights. The Rams knotted up after that scoring drive. Peterson sets up and will kick it away. It's kick off. his away. Smith fields it in the From end. the goal line. And take it up to the 20, and that's where he'll get hit immediately. Gets just past that 20, but it's uh, first and 10 from the 21 yard line. We'll see what the Cleveland Browns want to do here with 139. This is where things start to usually get a little weird with the clock management. Ball at the 21 yard line. Let's go, guys. Get the fans come to cheer for. Quinn, Quinn. Bowles goes in motion. Gonna go with Eddie George to the side. Does a good job to avoid three a three yard loss and does manage to pick up four. There off the first down carry. You can't underestimate the value of getting positive yardage on first down. Browns might be willing to take this into half with a three uh, three three tie. Looks like they're going with the shotgun. Second down and six. They hand the ball off again. Picks up three. This would be a good opportunity for the Rams to call a timeout. But they're very close to the first. Let's see if they can pick it up. It's third and about three. It's only a few feet. You ain't going nowhere. Third down and three, pitch to the outside. George loses two. There's a good timeout from the Rams. Probably should have taken one on the previous couple, uh, the previous play at least. Save yourself one. I think that's fine. But if you if you take that extra timeout, you have closer to a minute rather than closer to 30 seconds. Let's see what they want to do here. It'll be interesting. How aggressive do they want to be? Cleveland, obviously, very passive. 32 seconds left. Bruins Just very bleh. Like, what? Like these two minutes before the, the two minutes before halftime are brutal at times. Return back to the 40-yard line. It's first and 10. Just enough time for a play or two. Let's see what they decide to do in these last seconds of the half. 23 seconds left. We got the position, baby. Let's execute. They line up with four wide. So ball on the 40, five wides here for Jim Miller. Throws into what have I told you? A congested area. A lot of traffic. Like what? It is so weird the way Jim Miller is quarterbacking this Super Bowl. I've made my determination. I'm throwing to you regardless. Tight end is lined up left side. 
Second down and 10, dropping back. Miller off his back foot, fires over the middle, it's intercepted again! The third interception for this Cleveland Browns defense already in this half. Oh my goodness, you can see Miller throws it off his back foot. He's dropping and it's just, oh my, it's an awful throw looking for Prowl. I don't even, I don't know. Well, there's not much time left here, Dan. Let's see what they do. 15 seconds left. See if they rip it down the field a little bit. Ball at the I kind of doubt it. They're in that weird spot where it's just this game doesn't make a lot of sense. Yep, that's what they're going to do. They're going to run it with Eddie George for a loss of one. And then instead of taking a timeout, they're going to run the... They line up with two wide They're going to run the ball again. They call the timeout with one second. I hate the ends of these halves. They have three timeouts. And they just don't use them. It's awful. It's awful. comes to a close and we're all they call the timeout to run that play what are you doing with Clark Dishman oh my god Super Bowl edition of the ESPN Cleveland update that was the offense you needed to run when you had first or second and goal from the half yard line and it's due in no small part to an effective run stopping front line the numbers tell the story here Tequila Spikes has troubled the quarterback with a total of one This is what I thought would happen, though, if uh, if Los Angeles could stop the run game, they will have a chance. Los Angeles, St. Louis, whatever. The Rams can do that. They have a chance, and that is what they have proven. They've kept it a 3-3 game. Their offense has shot themselves in the foot three times now with interceptions. But one of the bullet wounds was covered with the interception on the other side. So they're losing the turnover battle. They have as many turnovers as points, which is pretty awful. It's just this this Cleveland Browns offense looks atrocious. This is a huge run back up to the 34, nearly to the 35-yard line. Well, this game could go either way, Dan, and that's what makes this drive critical. They'd love to put some points on the board right here. Ball on the 34. That's my ball. You give me back my ball. Ball there. Go, bro. Take left. Couch fades back. Barely gets it. Couch finds walls for eight. Over the middle and completed for a nice pickup off first down. It's second down and two. Where was any of those? Where were any of those passes? They had like a couple of timeouts they could have worked with. They had a couple the plays. They probably could have tried to pick up at least a few yards and given their kicker a shot to get three. Ugh. Utterly bizarre. Eddie George gets tackled by the feet, falls forward, and he'll pick up the first down. A nice job by him. The Rams have done a very nice job bottling up Eddie George after he ran all over the Indianapolis Colts defense to the tune of nearly 200 yards. Might have actually had over 200 yards by the end of the game. I think he was short at like 195. Doesn't matter. Point was, played very well in the AFC title game, and the Rams have done a great job bottling him up. I do think that there is some merit to kind of just keeping it going, trying to keep those legs churning. Eventually, you'll wear this defense down. They just need to be better balanced, and Tim Couch needs to make throws that make this defense back up a little bit. That might create some space in the running game. Second and nine. They're going to go with George. He gets out of a tackle in the backfield, and that's going to spring him loose for a huge run. The 40 down near the 30 yard line. He'll get tackled at the 32. That is what Cleveland has been waiting for all day long. All game long. Let's back it up to see how it all came about. 
One bounce tackle. Bam. Big play. The Browns have a first after the big run on that last play. Cleveland working with the first possession of the second half. Nearly half of the third quarter gone. From the 32, it's a fresh set of downs. In motion is a receiver to the slot. Eddie George is going to run to the side of the field. They pulled that receiver from, and he'll pick up nine and a half. Second down and one. One of the weirder spots, I guess it just kind of, he must have dropped a knee down a little bit sooner than he, I realized. But with some of these animations and the tackles, it does look like if they typically get the benefit of the doubt of where the ball was, but we'll take a look here. What an impressive display of just sheer power. I guess he was about half a yard short. Either way, second down and one. Second and less than a yard. This is a good job. I know I complained about the way that they were running their offense, but they did do a good job sticking with this run game. This Rams defense is starting to get a little bit leakier. There's another first down on the ground. They don't really seem to want to put the game in Tim Couch's hands. I don't think he attempted a pass. He certainly didn't make a, have a completion in the second half of the AFC title game, but I don't even know if he attempted a pass. And they might be trying to do something similar here in the Super Bowl. From the 18-yard line, it's a fresh set of downs, and they are going to give it to uh, Eddie George, who will pick up two. We'll see what they want to do here with 125, I guess. Ball on the 17. They go with the I formation. Couch. Couch going to drop back and throw over the middle. Walls comes up with a catch and a touchdown. I thought that was going to be intercepted again, but instead, Walls makes an excellent catch. with the double coverage and scores. Bruski pulled himself out of position a little bit by hitting the triangle button. It's tough enough to catch in double coverage, but in the end zone, it's tougher. There's hardly any room to move. And a terrific job there by Cleveland to go down the field. About a four-minute drive is going to give them a six-point lead with a minute to go in the third quarter. Extra point pending, obviously. Obviously. The kick. kick is up, kick is good. The Browns take the lead with that score, 10 to 3. Eight plays, 66 yards. They'll give them credit for three minutes and 51 seconds. Carney off the up. clock. What does St. Louis have in response? Let's find out as they get ready for their first drive of the second half. We'll go ahead and take a knee. And he will decide to down it. They've been having a tough time passing the ball today, Dan. They need to set up some short passes and work into the bigger ones this drive. Ball at the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 25 receiver set for the St. Louis Rams. Miller drops back and fires and incomplete. Rambo is going to have to come up with a nice catch and hold on. There was a hit coming. Second and 10. Second and 10. Miller well, dropping back, throwing to the outside. Pretty tightly covered, but just kind of a missed pass there. Crowell, the intended target. Third and ten. Miller 
drops back and fires, finds a receiver in between a couple of defenders. It's first and ten. Rambo coming up with a nice reception right there. Jim Miller rolled the dice there with a pass and the double coverage. But he got it in there. Great throw. He did. He managed to get it in there. Nice pass. Good completion there. Good quarterback coach relations. Absolutely. The coach has to be happy with the result, though. You know, once he started breathing regularly. Ball on the 39. Miller, 7 for 18, 115 yards. No touchdowns, three picks. Huge third down conversion, though. Monster third down conversion. He's short of the 40. Miller throws, and that is well covered. That is just not a good throw. Yet again, Miller is they're either blanketed or wide open. There is no in-between. I mean, even the throw that he had, the nice completion on third down to convert for the first down, but in between two defenders. Yet again, five wide receivers for the St. Louis Rams. Miller drops back and fires. Oh, he finds a completed pass. That time of the clutter kind of benefits him a little bit. There's maybe a little confusion on the back end of that Cleveland Browns defense. Rambo been a very reliable set of hands throughout this third quarter. Great catch, but he really delivers on the run. Good job by number 41 to hit the triangle button and remove himself from the play. What, they're fast? Rambo driven into the turf on the sideline. Final seconds take away here in the third quarter of Super Bowl number whatever. Six, because that's our number. I think it's 38, 37, 38, something like that. Uh, the Rams been out gaining the Cleveland Browns, but the turnovers have bitten the Rams three times so far. 10-3 is the score. Cleveland did a nice job to come out of the gates in the second half. Long, methodical drive. Score the touchdown to take the lead as it was 3-3 at the half. And perfect, a perfect timing. Look at that. No touchdowns. Three picks. Miller's going to hand off to James. Probably a good call. They'll give him a yard on the carry. And that'll get this fourth quarter started. It's second and nine. Payton in motion. Second down and nine. Miller dropping back, throwing, and finds Pro. Nice little slant play there. And the catch is just outside the 10 yard line, I believe at the 12. So they'll have like eight shots here at the end zone. In the red zone. And there's the completion. Man, he made that easy. Those are kind of where I like when I'm playing these games. I like to have first and goal from like inside the five. So getting a first and 10 at the 12 is pretty awesome. Ball on the 12. Four reception, 65 yards, 16.2 yard average for Pro. They come out with an empty backfield. Five wide receivers yet again. Jim Miller throws, end zone caught. Oh, the hit jars the ball loose and it's incomplete. Rambo had his hands on it, but the hit. The quarterback has to trust his own, but he also has to make good Brutal. I did not like that throw. Ball at the 12-yard line. Three wide receivers on the field. Miller drops back and fires over the middle. It's Bubba Franks with the reception. He'll pick up eight, and it's third down and two. Clock is moving inside four minutes to go. Took a little bit for this drive to get going, but once they've gotten into a rhythm, St. Louis has been difficult for Cleveland to get a hang of. Third down and two. Edner and James on the carry. Stop for no gain. Fourth down. That was the that was the stop Cleveland needed. I think you kick the field goal here personally, but they are going to go for it on fourth down and two. Two backs, three receivers. Miller, short throw, wide open, caught, touchdown. Miller links up perfectly with his man for the score. We'll take another look. That rollout was 
perfect Jeff for them. I St. Louis or uh, Cleveland just seemed completely lost on defense. And it's an extra point away from a tie game with 313 to go. The Rams have been pesky in the games that we've watched them. They've kind of they've stuck around. They are better than their overall would indicate. I didn't realize how good they were. How highly ranked they were, except for one category was like weirdly low and that like tanked them. I don't know, it's very odd. The Rams tie this one up. Eleven play, eighty yard drive, two forty one. The drive time and it's ten ten. There's the kick. Smith fields this one. Caught and dropped. First down and ten. I guess returned and dropped. Well, it's a close game and time is running out. You have to love these situations. This is a big drive here. Ball on the 22. From the 22, what does Tim Couch and the Cleveland Browns offense have in store for us? Running the ball most likely. Couch is going to drop back and throw. Double coverage. Almost intercepted. Off the hands of Terrence Mathis and the defense had a shot at it. I wish my nose wouldn't stop bothering. Second and ten. Keep looking for. Uh, must have moved to the Kleenex box. Gross. Barely gets it off. Oh, that was almost intercepted. Terrible throw. Absolutely terrible throw. He needs to put it where he's going to be. Third and ten. My DB's gonna set this drive down right now. They have four receivers in. For as good as this Cleveland Browns offense has been, especially in that previous game, they have been befuddling in their play call decision decisions in these game in this game. It's so weird. It feels like they should be doing a lot better, but they just I mean a run on third down and ten? I know you want to try to catch the right here. It's the team off guard. Let me see if I can clip like the last minute. It's third down and ten. Miller drops, back. Miller drops back and fires into double coverage. Nearly throws an interception. There was a pitch to the outside. There was nowhere for that play to go. That was an awful play as well. What are these teams doing? There's 218 left well, in the Super Bowl. Still don't like to see this 11 time. for 25. Miller, back. Miller dropping back, fires deep. It's caught by Pearl. He dropped it. The hit jarred the ball loose and he's injured. Oh, no. Oh, it's first and ten. I apologize. He did catch the ball. I forget that when there is an injury, it does not change the down and distance. My my bad. My bad. My apologies. I was wrong. Miller drops back. Miller drops back and throws over the middle. They're gonna call pass interference on the defense. They're gonna flip the field on me. Number fifty-eight. Defense. So it'll be first and ten. Not a big yardage penalty, but getting that fresh set of downs. Also not the biggest deal. It would have been second and ten. But but a fresh set of downs, a few yards. Thankfully we haven't had a ton of pass interference calls. There has been a lot of clutter and collision and 
It's been it's been weird, but thankfully they've let a lot of it go. He says like they're real people. James with the carry. Trying to find a little bit of room, trying to use that vision, but can't come up with anything all that all that great. Second down in nine after the one yard game. Two minutes to go. Second and nine. Miller drops back and throws. It's off the hands of the receiver and it almost got intercepted. Make sure that he was positioned between the QB and the receiver on that baby. There was no way that was going to be a completion. It's third and nine. Split backfield. Miller drops Put down to nine for Miller, who fires and it's tipped. Ooh, he again, he went to Pro Hill, who's back in the game after being injured. Let's go to Michelle Westfall on the sidelines. Michelle? It's just a cut on the elbow, Dan. They're stitching it up, and he should be ready to go in just a few plays. Thanks, Michelle. Going, comes in oh, they are going for it on fourth and nine. Oh, they're punting. They're punting the ball on fourth and nine. This game doesn't make any sense. I guess they are kicking it. Never mind. I would have been a. Williams is going to actually take that catch on the run. What is happening? I think my PlayStation 2 is melting right now. Biggest drive of the game right here, Dan. They can put this one away if they somehow get into scoring range. One minute, 47 seconds to go. Ball in the Cleveland 21. Couch, fades back. Couch drops back and fires. Nice grab by Walls. Walls up to the 40 to the 45. Where he's angled out of bounds, and it's first and ten with 142 to go. That is a terrific catch. Nabs the football for a nice reception, right there. But the play doesn't stop there, Dan. No, sir. That's Bam. just the first act in a beautiful big yard play, a sterling effort all around. One forty-two on the clock. Four receptions, 57 yards. Most of it. Coming on that last reception. Mathis in motion. Couch drops back. Couch dropping back. Fire short over the middle. I like the play call there. No pick up seven. 133 to go. Gotta speed it up a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be the fastest thing in the world, but any any sort of you know. All at the 48 yard line. Urgency would be nice. They have two tight ends in. Offset eye formation. Going with a pitch to the outside. Eddie George. They've been looking for room with him for most of the day. They haven't really found a whole lot of daylight with him. It's a nice run there under a minute. Arm 16 carries, 66 yards, 63 after the hit. Pretty significant reduction for the previous game, but it's hard to replicate those numbers in this style of game. Five minute quarters. 30 seconds to go. Couch drops back and throws over the middle. It's Walls again. He picks up eight, nine and a half. They're going to run a hurry up offense here, even though they have timeouts. 20 seconds to go. Second down and one. 15, 10, Couch, fires, toward the end zone, caught, he's going inside the five, it's a touchdown, the Cleveland Browns take the lead with five seconds to go. There's no way you can call that good clock management, they got very lucky. An absolutely miraculous touchdown. Carney lines up for the point after. It's 
puts away. Kick is up. Kick is good. The Browns, with that score, take the lead. They're up 17 to 10. Carney lines up for the kickoff. Great kick. What a bizarre couple of games here to end the season. St. Louis obviously not out of it yet. They still, there is life in this game five seconds left oh, this is yeah, especially with this game you can get that weird back foot throw the defense does take themselves out of the play a lot with the triangle button the jump knocks them out of the play quite frequently they have one shot here to tie this game up miller from the shotgun drops way back throws it deep it's off the hands one more shot they have one more shot it almost worked Just one second left on the clock. This is for all the marbles. Miller, from the gun. Miller drops back. back. Final hurl. He caught it. Oh my gosh. I said that it was going to happen. He might not be fast enough to get there. He got pushed out of bounds. Game over. At the 20 yard line. There's the whistle and that's the end of the game. What a finish! Champions, wow! Super Bowl champs just won the game, 17 to 10, and amazingly, that will do it for another exciting season of NFL football. I can't. Michelle Westfall, myself, Dan. I can't believe it. That is such a wild way to end it. It just went to the wrong well, everyone, receiver. We'll see you right here next August. This is Clark Dishman welcoming you to the ESPN Post Game Show. The Rams the outgained them by nearly a hundred the yards. The Browns clamped down demolished them in the passing eight. game. The Three turnovers. On the back. Three costly turnovers. Tim Couch, threw Tim for Couch, your player of the game, two touchdowns, a pick, two touchdowns. eight for thirteen. I mean, those are the numbers you want. I know a lot of people, especially in today's day and age, would go game manager. That's what you want. That shouldn't be an insult. He managed the game. He did not lose them the game. He tried, but he didn't. Let's take one last look at this play. Uh... It's just, it's the worst. Oh, this is so weird because it's, it's pressure sensitive on the PS2 controller. Gross. So there it is. There's your triangle jump, right? There's the play. There's the situation that's going to take it, take you out of the play. All you have to do is get that past the defender and you have you have a shot it's going to go to number 80 Payton who's been good throughout this entire game but this is what you're looking for i mean this is this is what you want to see there is no one back there no one is back there oh god i hate this control stick oops All the controls are backwards, so it's hard to figure out like where the zone is. And he just doesn't. It's a pretty good block by Pro Hill. I don't know what is going on there with the wiggly thing. Taken out of bounds. He's up, I think, 20 yards. The 20 yard line. And that does it. And that does it for this uh, this edition. There's your Super Bowl wrap up. This, for whatever reason, that does get a copyright strike, so we won't actually watch it. The other music is fine. That will conclude season six of Random Rosters. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. We'll be back probably later in the year august maybe september 
uh, we'll, we'll start this up again. Uh, we're going to take a little break from it. The, uh, just try to get, I guess, into a better rhythm on my part. The views have been a little inconsistent. So um, we're going to we're gonna put this on ice. We're going to do some other stuff. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll go back on my word and uh, we'll just kind of start it anyway. But uh, thank you again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I have a good time making these. Um, I hope people enjoy them. Um, but yeah, I just like to focus on some other stuff for a little bit. And uh, we'll call it there. Thank you again for watching. Congratulations to the Cleveland Browns, Super Bowl champions for the first time ever. And that is a great way to end it. Those two last two games were wild. If you'd like more content from me, subscribe right here. Ring the bell down below. You can watch other episodes here. You can watch the full series it's on the main profile under its own little tab. All six seasons have 20 videos. So if you haven't watched any of those, go check those out. They're a lot of fun. And then you can watch baseball up there. I'll be back later tonight with MLB to uh, MLB The Show 24 taking on the Atlanta Braves. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you. Nah, see you later. Uh, good sports. Go football. <laughs>